everybody, a warm welcome to Wisdom from North. I'm Janneke and today I'm here with the lovely Terina Berge. Terina is a raw food chef, she's a wellness coach and author, she's a kundalini teacher and a yoga teacher and a meditation teacher and she does retreats all over the world and she's very passionate about the holistic approach to spirituality and also finding that inner strength within and that inner still point and that's one of our topics for today. Hello Terina, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. So, Tirina, I know that you love also speaking about nurturing yourself and being kind to yourself. And I'm excited about that because you're going to be one of the teachers that is going to present this on my new platform uh, mm -hmm. this fall. And guys, uh, I'm transforming the whole wisdom from North. It is very exciting for me. I'm launching a new platform this fall. Uh, I have this idea in March coming over me and I'm following my dream now and I will be telling you all about it and Trina will be one of the teachers delving into the topic of how we can nurture ourselves because I think it's important that we also get the details and the tools on on different perspectives on personal development and spiritual the spiritual journey and if you want to know more about this you can sign up for my English newsletter below this video on the link and of course subscribe to my YouTube channel. But today we're going to speak about the holistic lifestyle and because I'm inspired by you Terina, um, many that I interview are into one path or one direction and you have this wholeness approach but it wasn't always like that because you started way back, you started in the 90s, uh, 90s. Uh, and you didn't do yoga, didn't, didn't do meditation, uh, but that kind of came um, along with your uh, journey. And you said also you tried it all. So tell us a little bit about how this journey started for you. You know, back in 95, I felt that that was the point in my life that I had that urge to more connect with myself and find more out of what I was supposed to do, what my calling was. And I felt this spiritual pull inside of me to really connect and find more out and also maybe to heal myself but I, I did start very early with meditation but I'm not so sure that I felt that I succeeded with it and I didn't start with yoga but I started very early with Tai Chi so I think when I started in 95 I almost started uh, on all levels immediately I had to start looking into what I was eating and I started to detox and uh, I started to meditate but mostly with mantras because I thought it was much easier with sounds uh, since I thought it was so uh, hard to just sit in silent, silence because of my monkey head. And I also very soon in just about a few weeks also noticed that uh, how I thought and how I felt also had an impact on me and that I could change my thoughts, like gratitude, for instance. Moving into gratitude, more with your thoughts, are you thinking more grateful thoughts or... I think I just maybe, probably I, I read a book about saying that you should be doing this exercise each evening, that you should be uh, thanking for everything and try to turn things around. And I just thought, I, I will try because I was kind of, I was so eager to do, um, to, to, to try to go into this holistic and spirituality. So I, I kind of just... Uh, tried everything, as I said, so I just every evening started for a few minutes to turn um, to turn things around. So for instance, if I didn't catch the bus, I will find something positive about it that I managed to go to work anyway, or I'm just thanking for anything in my life, and I just saw, and I didn't really think that this was going to work, I didn't have any assumption of how this will impact my life. But after three weeks, I just noticed that my my outlook on life was so positive. Wow. That something really fundamental has changed. Because when I started in 95, I think I had like, uh, uh, at least at the moment, and I had, uh, I, uh, I had candida. So I was, my nervous system was very affected by it. 
and I think I was in, in a downward spiral where everything was kind of negative and I didn't have energy to do anything. And so when I started to turn it around and I saw after three weeks that suddenly everything was so positive, it was a big, big change in my life. And I just suddenly noticed, hey, for the last three weeks, you every night started to turn things around and, and saying thanks and making it positive. And it just dawned on me that... It- you just broke up a little bit in the Skype there. Can you explain a little bit more about actually the, the, how you did it? You said it was a few minutes each night few minutes each night where I just, I just um, took the whole day and I, I went through it in my mind when I was laying in bed and just uh, thanked for anything that was good. So I saw the good things and if there was any negative, like I was arguing with my, my boyfriend or I didn't catch the bus or something upsetting had happened, I changed it around to something positive each night. And if I couldn't turn it around, I'd just say, I don't know why this happened, but I, I thank him for it anyway. I like and that. Uh, yeah. I actually heard another that I interviewed, Yvonne Frank Monson. She said, you know, thank, thank for everything that happens, even the worst things. And, and that seemed hard for me to understand. Why should I thank for something that's not positive, that I feel is really awful? But it is that faith that you're giving to the universe that everything that happens to me is uh, there for a reason I cannot see it right now but I'm sure you have my back and I think there's a reason for it so thank you and that's like this beautiful place to be in and I was also thinking about when you do it at night right before you go to sleep that's the mindset you're bringing into the dreams and then it goes down into your subconscious And that's where we want it. You know, we want it in the subconscious because that's what is fueling a lot of our actions every day. And I can assume that you wake up uh, then in the morning with another feeling as well. So that was really brilliant. And maybe you didn't even know how brilliant it was. You just started to realize the effects, you know. No idea because I think it was for a month I just uh, really... uh, started to, to, to change everything and turn uh, everything in my life. I was reading spiritual books, I was detoxing, I was singing mantras. I did everything I could do for at least what I knew about at that point. And uh, I really saw the great impact of this, uh, you can call it like a, a small meditation. I was lying down each night to do this, uh, this uh, exercise. And, but I also think what you said is really important and true. But also just by feeling good inside of you, that you're turning around and saying thank you. When you fill yourself with gratitude and saying thank you, you feel good inside of you. And when you feel good inside of you, you have turned it around. Right. Because your feeling is impacting the whole being of you and your outlook on life and how you receive things as well. And I also want to mention that you said that you you know you didn't only do it one time or a couple of days a week. You did it every day, and I think that's where we get the result when you do something over time. And I've discovered that really with myself as well. When I'm starting a new meditation, I'll do it for 21 days because someone is saying that you know the, these habits can change after 21 mm-hmm. days. People are saying different you know numbers, but um, nevertheless, I find it really useful to do it over um, yeah a certain number of days and maybe from one period for example for a woman to the next period that's something I've started with to be in sync with my period in a way Mm. I think that's uh, yeah that's powerful but the beauty about it was that I was doing this like for only a few minutes and even that but as you said it's so important to do a practice uh, every day or almost every day so it, it really gets uh, um, you, you, you fill it with energy and you're turning around and you're kind of connecting your own patterns and turning them around every day to something that's more positive and, and uh, better for you 
and uh, after a while you will see the result. But I was amazed because I didn't know, and I didn't have, I hadn't heard about uh, 25, uh, 21 days or anything. I just, after three weeks, started to notice why am I so happy? Because wow. three weeks ago, I was, I wasn't depressed, but I was very negative and. Um, Maybe sort of depressed, but mostly just very negative. And suddenly I was so positive and I thought that life was so positive. And yeah, you know that feeling. Yeah, and then positive things start mm -hmm. to happen as well. So with this holistic approach, um, can it be tiresome sometimes of, of all the things you need to do? You know, you are a raw food chef, so you're uh, concerned about what you're eating, you're meditation, meditating, you're doing yoga, you're thinking about the mind, you're doing... Uh, is, uh, I mean, this is your work, but for a normal person who has another job in a way, is it possible to, to have this holistic approach or is it just too much to focus on? Well, uh, I think you have to start. I maybe, uh, as I said, I started almost with uh, so many things at the same time. But of course, at that time, it was only by... Um, it's like a spiral. You start with something and then you integrate it. And, and for me, like eating healthy is as natural for me as uh, brushing my teeth. It's just something I do. I don't think about it. It just feels good for me to have my fridge filled with, with good things. But I have to say, I don't only eat vegan food and I don't only eat raw food. I think that for me, it's, uh, the key word is balance. So just that I, I kind of said that early. Uh, but I love to eat plant-based and I love to eat raw food, especially in the summer season. And I think also to emphasize on what you love to do instead of what you have to do also has a great impact. I think that you build health and a good life on how you're feeling inside of you and not being strict and just have to, to, to live perfectly or just doing what's right for you. Mm. Uh, I think that's the key. Right. So three things that you love and don't stress too much and just start out by making maybe a smoothie in the morning and if that's too much, just eating, snacking on veggies on the way to the work or in your lunch break, just starting to eat more plant-based, it will gradually impact you and I think also to focus on what you do more of, then you automatically do less of anything else. Hmm. So let go of you have to and you should and only and just trying to to find a few things that you feel that you can manage to do and do more of that if it feels good for you so when we're on the con uh, the topic of food um if we're starting out we want to eat more healthy um is there um is it a process that at first it can be very unnatural for the body all of a sudden eating more plants? Uh, can we have a reaction that we need to be aware of? Depending. If you came on, you going from ordinary junk food or just uh, lots of meats and, and not so much uh, kind of clean food that you, you, you prepare yourself, uh, and you would change totally over to only eat vegan or raw food, yes, you will have a reaction in your body. But that's also why I said just start to go in one direction and introduce yourself to more healthy foods. And healthy food is to eat more veggies and fruits and natural food that aren't... Uh, and, and reduce the sugar and coffee and, and, um, and grains and milk products. So just by doing small changes, that will really increase your energy. But sometimes, of course, uh, if you're not, um, if you only eaten milk, chocolates, and, and, and white processed sugar and processed food, and you suddenly start to eat no, uh, more natural food, like whole foods, you will probably feel that your taste but also need to change a little bit. Your taste really? Because I eat so little sugar, uh, uh, carrot for me is very sweet. But of course, 20 years ago, uh, when I started to eat a carrot, I didn't think about that as, as uh, treating myself with something that was 
right. tasty and sweet. <laughs> That's interesting. That's good news, though. So, uh, is it important to listen to your body all the time? You know, uh, maybe I don't need plant-based food now. Maybe I do meet, need meat uh, that you just, um, like, yeah, taking this step by step, uh, starting small, but also listening, really, how do I feel after eating this? Yes, and, and the important thing, because if you're saying this to a person that hasn't walked this path or hasn't been introduced, they will say, but I feel great after eating an ice cream or some junk food. Yes, maybe when you eat it, but after you probably feel terrible and sluggish and heavy and, and all feelings are not clear. Um, so it's important to know when do you listen? It's not the minute you eat it because you're kind of satisfying uh, a, a, a craving you had in that instant. So that that pizza felt in, so good, but maybe not the, uh, the um, one hour later and the day after. So that's important. That that is one. Um, and then also, I think like tuning an instrument. So if you are totally new to this, your sensors maybe need to clear up a little bit. You need to detoxify a little bit. Uh, so your your body sensor system get more clear and used to this. Okay, so so actually I've never detoxed. Okay. So, so uh, can you tell us a little bit, me, me uh, included here, um, without going or needing to go on a retreat, if I can't afford it, if I don't have time, like how can I detox in my life, just starting out with a detox? I mean, you can detox on so many levels. You could just say, I will detox from cutting out sugar, all kinds of sugar. That will really help your sensor system. Uh, and you could uh, just leave out any grains, especially gluten, but uh, just, I don't saying that grains are wrong for you, but to clear up that system, it will be very beneficial, I think, to eat very much more easy digestible food and leave out milk products and grains and uh, especially the, the more white refined foods and sugar. That would be really good. And you can say in a sense it's some kind of a detox. But of course, if you wanted to really go on what we call a detox, then you maybe would only eat raw food or vegan food um, as much as natural as possible, and maybe also fasting with juices. That's more what we maybe um, think about when we say a detox. Hmm. I remember uh, in the high school I used to diet a lot so it wasn't to detox it was to diet <laughs> and I, yeah. I ate fruit a whole day only fruit and then I yeah. lost some pounds or something but I think I jumped up after that but I guess I was sort of, sort of a cleanse <laughs> but you do it with another intention and it's more just to clear your system and that's what I mean about detox it's it's more that you're helping your body to assimilate and digest and also to clear out so you get more, um, yeah, so maybe for instance you can uh, you can more trust your body of the signals that it's sending you. Right. Because when you are so filled up with lots of thoughts and so many maybe wrong foods or eating just too much of something that isn't good for you or not too healthy, um, you wouldn't probably, you can't probably define what's going on. You just feel that everything is a little bit chaotic and you feel a little bit sluggish and, and, and heavy or you think a little bit negative. So, but just by changing the, the, the food a little bit, it will impact your feelings and your thoughts and your skin and your general wellness. Right, because what we're talking about here is that food is energy and we put in a certain energy in the body and it doesn't only affect our bodies and our skin and how we feel, but it affects our thoughts, you're saying. And your feelings. Right. 
Mm. So it affects the whole thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have to ask you, what, what about alcohol? Now we're in, you know, the summer. Uh, is it a no-no? Is it okay? What is, I mean, there's no answer, like one answer to this, but what is your perspective? I think also, I think you have to come back to what is health. I think health, good health is, is creating and um a good energy inside of you and balance is a big big key word i think you're not in balance and in good health if you're too fanatic or too strict but at the same time you also need some discipline if you're going to change your patterns and do uh, things that are better for you we all know that so uh, but to maybe like for instance to drink uh, 10 cups of coffee each day wouldn't be healthy but if you really love coffee and you're looking forward to it maybe one or two cups a day would be actually very good for you because you really are so happy when you have it uh, and the same with a glass of wine I don't think you should drink it every day but if you really I think in this uh, society today we are so used to satisfying our needs and cravings immediately when we were kids we were eating uh, sweets, at least we were supposed to, maybe we, we had a chance uh, some other time too, but we didn't have it every day, we have it on Saturdays. So by looking forward and being so happy when you finally had it, but if you have like 10 cups of coffee each day, you wouldn't be happy to drink them, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even think you were drinking coffee, you were just uh, swallowing it. And the same with wine and things like that. So if it's something that really, really is something you're looking forward to do and you think that you have uh, a lot of uh, enjoyment out of it, I think a little bit you can, you can drink and that will be fine for you. It makes so sense. You know, I, I think it's all about that awareness, you know, gratefulness. It's all connected, like really if you have that glass of wine, really enjoy it, noticing it, not just pour it down. Like you said, yeah. just drink a lot of coffee just because it's a habit. And changing our habits is the most difficult thing. But like you're saying, discipline, uh, mm. not like a negative discipline, but more like a decision. Like you made a decision. Uh, mm. And I think we, we, we need to make a decision. Like I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this out. Yeah. And this has, sorry. And I think also that uh, you need discipline. For instance, if you wanted to eat healthy or quit smoking or drinking less coffee or whatever, you have to kind of have a plan and you have to stick with it. And maybe you have to be more strict and more disciplined for a while. And if that's a week or a month or a year, whatever, but then you kind of come to that neutral where it's a habit, a new habit has been formed. And then you can find a balance by just saying, you know what, I really appreciate by having one glass of wine two times a week and, and that's uh, something that gives me great joy, I will do that. Or for instance, um, uh, coffee or sugar, but I think when it comes to sugar, it's, it's so many more benefit. you have so much more of the sweeteners that are better than the white sugar so that you could, you could just find another one that's more upgraded. And I think also that uh, it's, it's a great um, thing if you find that the best quality and find uh, a more optimal upgrade. So, for instance, if you're talking about sugar, go with coconut sugar instead of white sugar. If you're having uh, coffee, maybe go organic coffee. And, uh, yeah, I think, do you, do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so instead of just, an, um, for instance, if you want to, if you crave something sweet every night, maybe instead of walking to the store and just get like a, a ready uh, made uh, with processed uh, sugar, like a, a snack bar or a chocolate, maybe you can make yourself uh, something sweet like a raw food treat or something that's really healthy for you that have the nutrients inside of it that will be more beneficial for you but just also um eating something that uh feels good for you right so you're kind of upgrading it yeah 
and I wanted to go back to um, doing something over a period of time because what I've managed or noticed is that I get that accomplishment feeling and that builds my self-confidence and my self-esteem and my trust in myself that I can actually dedicate myself to something. And I just noticed that this past year, because I've been doing different um, processes or challenges, like, <clears throat> sorry, the last process that I was in or challenge was a minimalistic challenge where I was letting go of one more thing every day. And now mm. I'm on the 28th day uh, and I, I went out with it on, on publicly, publicly on Facebook. Uh, so a lot of people followed me. And that meant that I had to do it, you know, so I set my up for it. Uh, yeah. But I feel so great that I'm actually doing it every, every day. And now I've let go of 500 things. And I'm like, I'm going to do this again. Like, uh, so, so this, so that's the, yeah. That's the detox. Right. Yeah. 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 So you're detoxing. <laughs> It's the same principle, detox right. letting go of things that aren't serving you anymore. And of course, we we so often think it's only about what we kind of eat or not eating or drinking or not drinking. But it's so many ways of detoxing. So you can detox your home, you can detox your thoughts. And as you did, you, you kind of detox your, your life and home with just clearing out old stuff. Yes, and I looked at the objects and asked, you know, would this object give value to my life? Yeah. Yes, it will. And then I kept it or no. And then, and of course, it takes some time, but it's really nice process. Yeah. Uh, because don't you want to surround yourself with things that give you value and, you know, let go of the things that don't? So I yeah. love that. Yeah. And uh, so... When you started this, this has really changed your life because you said you used to be restless. You used to not feel that uh, stillness inside, that that strength inside. You used to be afraid of talking to uh, talking publicly, mm -hmm. and all of this has changed. I mean, there are so many benefits. Tell tell us a little bit about how this has changed your life. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a long time ago since I started, but. And I think you always, you never reach a point where it's over, where you kind of reach your destination. And it's not about reaching a destination, it's just being on that, that path where you kind of feel that you are growing as a person. But of course, just to be more in tune with me, be more grounded in my body, and also feel that I have... Uh, managed to turn around my life i feel more free and connected with my purpose and not holding back and and, and hiding behind so many masks that feels really great hmm. and now you uh, are doing talks and you were afraid of that before i mean that's like a, a very concrete example yes yeah. But as I said, anything, there were so many things that didn't come naturally or easy for me, but I just felt at some deep level that it was something I was supposed to do or that I would be um, growing as a person by doing it. Like, for instance, meditation, it wasn't easy at all. And I was the person, when it comes to food also, it wasn't easy for me at all because I didn't have a relationship with food until I was. At 25, I was only eating things that uh, you just bought in the store and you heated it or something. I didn't make my own food. So I really turned around on so many things. And also, as you said, uh, speaking to your audience. But I think by connecting more to my authenticity and being more into myself and grounded, of course, that helps. And um, yeah, I just feel actually great with my life now. Mm, beautiful. And just to go uh, a little bit over to uh, Kundalini Yoga, because you, you're doing so much. You're a Kundalini Yoga teacher. And I remember you said that you were a bit like, no, that's not for me. Like that. Yeah. And then you tried it out and you just had this wonderful feeling. Yeah, I thought, uh, but I mean, for uh, hearing so much negative or warning things about Kundalini. So when I heard about Kundalini Yoga, I was like, that's a red flag for me because I heard that Kundalini is something you should be 
um, very cautious about. But uh, I uh, also have to say that since '95, I started to work with crystals and flower essence and uh, meditation and, and really getting into more vibrational medicine. So when I connected to yoga, I was doing more vinyasa yoga and hatha yoga for years as a, just my own private practice. And uh, then I found Kundalini Yoga, and when I came over that first, uh, the warning signs, and I just, suddenly I was with a friend in uh, on a holiday, a vacation, and she was a yoga teacher and Kundalini Yoga teacher. I can just see a profound change in her, because I've known her for years, and I could just see that she was more grounded and more more centered so i thought whatever she is doing i'm interested in that so maybe if that's what kundalini yoga is i shouldn't be afraid of trying that and i tried it and i just felt this immediately freedom in my 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 body and mind and soul i just feel more relaxed with my expression and a very good feeling in my body and and uh, mind and emotions so would you say that you've had a kundalini awakening, that classical awakening that people are talking about, or that kundalini awakening? No, because I haven't had uh, actually that. Um, I think mm, when people are referring to that kundalini energy, it's something of a strong energy that just comes up your spine. And I haven't really had that experience. I felt a lot of energy and I can feel very strong energy. But in Kundalini Yoga, we are actually more balancing the nervous system, strengthening and building it up and maybe also um, healing all nerve damage and stress and also balancing your energy and your hormone and chakra system. So if uh, so you get more prepared to getting a kundalini um, awakening or whatever you want to call it. But you kind of strengthen your system and energy and nerve system so you can tolerate that strong energy. Mm. So it's more about actually balancing yourself and, and be more grounded and more present and and really balancing your chakra system that is so great for us. So you, your clients, what, what is that that main thing that is coming again and again in your clients that you're helping them with? What's like the, the biggest uh, pattern or, or problem that they have that's coming back again and again? I think people are struggling today with that they don't think they're good enough. So when they are doing and starting to change their life, they are almost sure that they aren't doing it well enough and they are almost letting themselves down by that, that thought pattern because I think that, um, and of course they are very stressed as well. And yeah, I think that's the major thing, that they don't see the progress that they have and they uh, focus maybe on the wrong things and things that aren't doing good enough. They're coming from a mindset and they want to be more healthy, but they haven't started to support themselves, understand themselves, and be compassionate about themselves. I think it has to really start there with also with, with a good health and a general wellness and, and a good life that you really want well for yourself that you learn to understand and be your best friend and understand your needs and where you're coming from and your history and taking better care of yourself i think that's key in everything having uh, and it can be difficult for so many but trying at least to have an open attitude and um being conscious that it's important uh, maybe uh -huh. you don't uh, manage it immediately to start to be your own best friend, but knowing that this is important. You know, I might ne meet resistance now. Going into on the yoga mat or, or trying the food, there can be like negative thoughts saying, you know, what are you doing? Are you trying to be healthy? I mean, the monkey mind can be so, so mm -hmm. awful and negative, but just being prepared that that will come. Be like, okay, I hear you, but I'm still going to do this anyway. 
because you will meet resistance. What that's what I've experienced that you meet resistance mm-hmm. from that whatever that monkey the mind that narrator is that ego negative uh, uh, speaks pos- person behind here whatever that is it will rebel when you're making changes uh, and for me it has helped just knowing that because then I don't identify with it and I'm not stopping because of it I'm like okay it came yeah I was told it was going to come and it came but I can deal with it I don't have to listen to it I'll do this anyway and the more then you actually go into the practice the more it will I experience it will silence itself more and more I think that you have um, we have to understand everything is a process but also that everything are kind of trying to stain it um, trying to survive so even your patterns they will always try to survive everything on this planet even thoughts and feelings and they're just trying to survive I'm, I'm, I'm feel threatened if you're doing this change I will not survive with that thought pattern so if you start to look at yourself and also of course it may be listening to um, here uh, it feels like if you're saying that great myth that uh, your thoughts aren't you, or it, it's like in the start, that's really a big concept that you aren't maybe um, ready to, 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 to understand what it really means, but also just to, for instance, I had one woman, woman on a retreat uh, just a month ago, and she felt she was very restless, and I could see when we're doing more calm yoga and meditation, she was just looking around in the room and she find it so hard to connect and, and be more still. And so she thought maybe probably her patterns or her thoughts were saying, this is not for you, uh, this is not cool, this is boring or whatever. And I talked to her and she said, and I said, but do you feel calmer after the class? Yes, I do. Yeah, but then it, it worked on you. So your thoughts or your patterns were saying all this, things making noise and distracting you. But after the class, you really had a big impact on you. You had the effect, so you did the work. Yes. You did succeed. And she was like mind blown. It's like, oh, yes. Yes, I feel so much more calm now after a few days. And the next day, because maybe because we have, we have been uh, talking about it, I can see she, she was so more attuned with the, the yoga class. She wasn't so much distracted because the, her, her thoughts, she didn't believe them so much anymore. Right. It's like that thought, but I'm still having an effect, so I'm still doing it right. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that was great to see. Yes, and that's super important. So I'm glad we, we uh, got that across because uh, we're so hard on ourselves and it's not yeah. our, our fault that we have this that, that thought, whatever it is. So don't lose faith, you know. Uh, be courageous, be the heroine in your own life or your hero and do what's good for you because you deserve it. And it's so or it doesn't feel good in the start, but you feel good after, for instance. Right. That's also something you could start to notice because it's so easy to think, oh, I didn't do it right. I'm a failure. Of course, I'm too stressed to do this. I didn't succeed. There's all this. Uh, thoughts going through people's mind when they start to work with themselves and try to be, be more connected but they're kind of losing the point that they are really doing a big uh, major shift and they are making pro- progress it's a process right and i can't wait for you to really delve into this even more how to nurture ourselves on my new platform because it's so super important to learn about that and to inspire each other to do it Uh, because when we are doing it together when we have a teacher you know uh, taking us through this we commit to it more yeah i deserve this you know thank you so much and thank you guys for watching and remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't before and of course remember to be the light that you are. Bye-bye.